I'm about to salvage some components off of this old circuit board. I thought it would be a good time to demonstrate my AOYU, or however it's pronounced. It's uh, A-O-Y-U-E. They're $140 off of Amazon. This is the 852A model. It originally comes with a vacuum pickup tool that I don't have here. There's actually a few things I don't have, and I'll explain that in a minute. Alright, let's take a look at the system. Here's the vacuum hose that that vacuum pickup tool connects to. Here's the heat gun. It actually gets air, uh, it sucks it through the vacuum tube here. I built my own tip for this, mainly because it's a lot cheaper. I got this system second hand, so there are a few things I didn't get. Turn the system on with this red button. As you can see it's turned off. The gun itself, the hot air gun is turned off. <clears throat> Turn it on. Hitting that. You can adjust the temperature here. It is all in Celsius. Which I wish it was in Fahrenheit, but I blame myself just for not learning Celsius. You can crank it up anywhere from 100 degrees Celsius all the way to 480 degrees Celsius. I don't know the exact conversions, but I know that 320 degrees to 608 degrees Fahrenheit. Here you have the air pressure. It goes from 99. down to 6. And you can see the ball here on that pretty blue light as you adjust. When it gets up to temperature, or rather when you turn it off and it needs to cool down, you flick the switch and you can see the air pressure jump and it actually cools down the filament in there. So it's supposed to make it last longer. I don't have any actual tools to show the uh, air pressure so, I'm going to use what I have at hand. I have a couple of surface mount components here. Um, this is something I commonly replace. It's an amplifier. And uh, I'm going to risk burning my table here to show you what the various air pressures will do to these components. So here's our components. I grab the hot air gun, turn on the system. And I'm going to set all of the settings to the lowest possible, obviously. The heat, which is already uh, down. I'm going to turn the pressure to the lowest setting. I'll tell you that you can you can fill the heat, but there's really little to no pressure behind it. And it's not going to blow these extremely lightweight components away. Um, turn it up to, like, say, 24. Uh, still nothing. You can fill the heat a little bit more. There's a little bit of pressure behind it. Uh, really not a whole lot. Do 50. Now you're getting a little bit of wind behind it. You can see that I can push the amplifier around just a little bit. But only, only barely. Turn it up a little bit more. We'll say 70. You can kind of even hear the air now. I can pretty much move that little guy around pretty easily. Jump up to 80s. Again, the amplifier obviously moves, and then we'll jump up to the highest setting, which is pretty nuts. I work with these, so it's really annoying for me when I blow the component off the board and I'm trying to solder it down. So it's nice to have really low settings for that. Alright, my goal here is just to show you uh, blowing some solder. So I'm going to put a little bit of flux on the board. Now there's a little bit of some sort of glue. It almost it's like hot glue on the board. I've tried to remove most I can but I feel like it's going to pose some problems that I would normally have removing or when uh, melting solder with this gun. But we'll see what happens. Put my heat about 400 degrees Celsius. 
not too concerned about burning this board. I'm going to set the air at about 54. A little bit lower than 54, actually. 39. Let's go with that. So, grab some tweezers. And start blowing some solder. That smelt these wires. Hey, look, check that out. There goes all that glue on the board. Not convenient. And gross. In fact, there we go. It's kind of funny. This is from an old smoke alarm, and they have glue on it that's gonna get all melty and gross if it were to get hot. This isn't normally how I hold my magnifying glass and stuff. So excuse my... Oh, there we go. See? Already flowing. Check that out. In fact, see if I can pull this transistor out. I'll let it heat long enough. I usually leave the solder behind on the board. You can see I made the board bubble a little bit there. So it gets pretty hot pretty fast. And there's my component. Pretty simple. So what do I think of this system? Well, if I would have bought it retail from Amazon for 140 bucks, it would have paid for itself in about two uses for me. And it's been a really good system. I haven't had any problems with it at all. None whatsoever. I don't use it a whole lot, but I have had it for a few years now. And it's kind of my hobby next to the urban exploration to work on electronics. I will say that I've worked with the higher grade hot air gun systems and they seem like they're built maybe a little bit better but there's really not that big of a difference between the systems in my opinion. Now maybe if you're using it for industrial use and you're going to use it non-stop day in and day out you might want to jump to a better system maybe. Again I've not had any problems with this one but I could see a more expensive brand maybe lasting a little bit longer if that's the case. But yeah, I highly recommend it for personal use. It's been great for me. So thanks for watching, guys. And remember to like this video, subscribe if you like my videos, and uh, please check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.